Well, um, I am back for another video update. Uh, last night was one of the uh, most difficult nights that I can remember. I uh, had a, uh, an ache in my stomach that just wouldn't go away. and uh, So it was a, it was a, uh, a difficult night. And um, uh, during the day I've been so tired that I can hardly think. And uh, my nurse came in, Alexis, and she told me that maybe that's a sign that my white blood cell count is starting to kick in. Uh, oftentimes, uh, people get really, really tired uh, when the white blood cell counts start. I'm, I'm below water with my white blood cell count and my absolute neutrophil count, but all of that will change in the next four or five days. I just don't know when, but I was kind of glad to hear that. Uh, occasionally, it's because you're starting to manufacture white blood cells. But anyway, I was thinking about um, a phrase, God's got you. I've told the story of Donnie Myers, who passed away on Father's Day, and who called me just before he passed away, and he said something uh, that I've never forgotten because he said this to me over a couple of years, but just before he died, he said, God's got you. God's got you. Well, Donnie's gone home to be with the Lord, and I miss him. And uh, when I think about him, I oftentimes uh, still uh, grieve, but I'm also delighted that he's absent from the body present with the Lord. He's with that great cloud of witnesses. But yesterday, I was walking down the hallway to go... Um, uh, exercise, which I'm committed to doing because I know it's very, very important to my recuperation. And um, uh, a, a guy uh, followed me into the exercise room who has leukemia. His name's Ramsey. And uh, we started talking, and the first thing, the first memorable thing that came to my mind that he said was, God's got you. And I just about broke down and cried uh, because I, I thought, wow, this is absolutely incredible that um, that Donnie went home to be with the Lord and God sent another angel who said the exact same thing to me, God's got you. And I know what he means by that. He means God has you in the palm of his hand. And so when you go through the difficult times, uh, you know that uh, God is with you, and uh, he'll never leave or forsake you. What a comfort that is to be a Christian in the midst of tribulation. Today I was listening through the Bible uh, on a word of promise, which we offered to people for their support of the ministry, and uh, so now I'm using it myself. And uh, because I was too tired to even read the Bible, and... Uh, one of the passages, I, I finished Acts and I got into the book of Romans. One of the passages that I ran across, of course, Romans chapter 12. Uh, Therefore, I urge you, my brothers, in view of God's mercy, uh, Paul says that we should not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds then we'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. For by the grace given me, says Paul, I testify to every one of you. Um, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I'm testifying to every one of you. Uh, do not consider yourself more valuable than, than you really are, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, Paul is talking about how each of us uh, has one body with many members, and each member has its own function, so in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. And then he says, you know, we have different gifts according to the grace that God has given us. 
So if a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do so cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. That meant a lot to me. And then faithful in prayer. So I have been joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And uh, that has made all the difference in the world. Of course, I'm ever aware of people praying for me because I get so many uh, posts that tell me that people are praying for me. I get letters uh, delivered to me by my wife in the hospital. And uh, so even when my mind isn't working very, very clearly, I mean, Romans chapter 12 used to uh, fall off my lips like, uh, like, like, like water. And um, it's a little more difficult for me now to recall, but uh, be patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, of course, joyful in hope. Uh, and um, yeah, that's what's sustaining me along with uh, your prayers and your support of the ministry I dearly love, the ministry of the Christian Research Institute. As I mentioned the other day, sometimes when I'm away uh, on the sabbatical, interesting sabbatical, um, you know, uh, the giving drops off because uh, people are less aware uh, of our ministry outreaches, like doing the podcast and the broadcast and so forth. But, but God's always been faithful. That's one thing I've recognized over 30 years. Sometimes I would fret, and uh, God always supplies. And uh, he does so in unusual ways. And uh, you wonder sometimes how you can fret when God has always been faithful. But that's the human condition, I suppose. Well, I um, might want to ask you to pray for my brother. My brother has a 103 temperature, and he's been is some kind of a flu and so he who is robust and healthy is trying to upstage me by having a higher temperature than I do. <laughs> so pray for my brother Reg. He is a saint. He is one of the, is, he is like, uh, I don't know, like my two sisters, Joby and Tana. I mean, they're just incredible, incredible people. I don't know how I got so blessed to have um, four of us. You know, that's the legacy of my, my mom and dad. All four of us love the Lord. And um, if you've watched some of the videos, you know my kids do, and my brother's kids do, and my sister's kids do. And uh, so this is uh, a great heritage that we're passing on, the heritage of faith. Um, so again, thank you for standing with me prayerfully, financially. Uh, your prayers mean more to me than anything else, I can tell you. Uh, I wanted to come on and do a video. I didn't, I, I haven't even taken a shower today. I'm supposed to take a shower every day. It's very kind of hard because I have to do that with this, uh, uh, this pole. <laughs> and you can't get anything wet and it's attached to you. And so it's a little difficult, but. Um, I've got to get up the energy to go into the shower and they tape, tape me up where I have all the tubes. I'll show you. You're going to have to see a, sort of a, you can see all the tubes hooked up to me here. That's how all the, how all of the uh, medications going into me. So you got to tape all that up so it doesn't get wet and uh, so it's a, uh, a bit of a, a challenge taking a, a, a shower. So I'm looking forward to losing my uh, pole buddy um, with all the bags hanging off of it, with all the medications. Can't even get it in the picture here. Oh, there it is. Sometimes there's more bags than there's space. 
And, uh, but anyway, I'm going to get my, my uh, energy up and I'm going to take a shower. And uh, again, thank you for your prayers. It's been a privilege to uh, make this uh, video and to post it right now.